Okay, we're back. I wanted to address a couple of things in this video. Uh, if, you were no, if you were keen in the last video, and somebody actually was, and they posted a comment in the last video, which I was going to address in this one, first of all. Um, I'm going to run the game from the last video, and if you notice, when I walk up to the door here, to the closet door, there, there's a slight walk-behind problem. You see how the door overlaps Sammy there? Um, obviously not what we want. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, first of all. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is not your typical, well, this is your typical walk behind problem, but this, this won't be solved your typical way with the walk behind issue that we've solved in the past because this door right here is a closed door object. So you can't set a walkable area, a walk behind area on an object. So how do, how do we address that? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about in this video, and so among other stuff. Um, but I, first of all, I want to show the um, room's objects. I'm going to select this closed door, which is the door we're having a problem with. And if you notice, there's one option here called uh, Baseline Overridden. You remember in the when we were talking about the um, walk behinds, there's something called a baseline, and I'll show you that um, on the walk behinds. Um, this is the walk behind area we had. Remember this dotted line? If you remember, this is the baseline. In other words, anything which means that any time that Sammy is above this baseline, then the walk behind is drawn on top of Sammy, and whenever he's below the baseline, then Sammy is drawn on top of the walk behind. Well, objects have similar a similar property, but by default, that baseline is, is, is turned off. Um, so the baseline, or I shouldn't say it's turned off, it's, it's, um, it's set to the lowermost pixel of the, um, of the object. In this case, the baseline would be this invisible line here, sort of where this this dotted line at the bottom of the object is, you know, it would extend all the way across the screen. That's by default the, the baseline for the object. That doesn't work for us because if Sammy is above that line, then the door will be drawn on top of Sammy, but yet we don't want that to happen. We want we don't want you know Sammy to be drawn on top of um, we want Sammy to basically always be drawn on top of the uh, the door. So one thing we could do, and the first thing that I thought of when I thought, oh, okay, I'll fix this, is you said this to true. It gives you another property called baseline, and by default that's set to one. In other words, that's basically at the very top of the screen. I guess technically maybe zero would be the top, but uh, the first pixel on the on the screen up here at the very top of the screen would be the baseline, meaning basically everything is drawn on top of this door. That doesn't exactly work. A lot of times that would work, but in this case it doesn't because there are objects behind the door. For example, this lantern here, and um, Mr. Donatello even will be in the door in the room. Let me show you what that looks like if I if I do that. Now, it looks kind of strange, but now Mr. Donatello is in the closet and the lantern is in the closet, but both of them now are drawn on top of the door because both of the them are below the door's new baseline, which is which is at the very top of the screen. Uh, that's not what we want. So what we really want is we want to set the baseline about, you know, right here where the the, um, the corner, the back corner of the door meets the floor here. Um, if you look at my mouse um, coordinates, you see that that's about 105. So I'm going to set the baseline to about 105. So therefore, that should fix everything. Um, and let's see how that works. The, the lantern disappeared in the editor, so the editor is, is smart enough to know. Okay, and now Sammy is drawn exactly where he should be. Now, um, I actually had gone through and set Don Donatello's starting position to 103. I think it was 105 before, which is what I had set at the very beginning when we created Donatello. Um, that doesn't work exactly either because now Donatello is below the baseline as well. And he, um, at 105 where he was, he's actually drawn on top of the door. So before the video started, I just went in here and I set this to 103. Um, which is just one pixel above, or actually I guess I could set it to 104, which is one pixel above the where we set the baseline of the door, which is 105. So again, run that, and then everything works fine. Um, when, I, when the door disappears, of course when I use the key on the door, all that goes away. The object basically is, is invisible at that point. So um, so that goes away. Now one thing that I did want to address too is now, now that the door is open, we want Sammy, Sammy should be able to walk inside the closet because the door is open, but he can't. Um, the reason is because when I created this door, um, I took away the walkable area. When we first created the, the room, we, we had set a walkable area so Sammy actually could walk in there. But when I cl closed, the, closed the closet door, basically, now he, he couldn't walk in there, so I deleted this. Well, we want to put that back, but we don't want, what we don't want to do is this. We don't want to say, okay, let's put that back. 
um, put the walkable area up like about like I had it before, fill that in, uh, and run the game. Because now, look what happens, and I think most of you can guess. I go up here, the door is closed, but Sammy is able to walk in the closet. Not what we want. We want, we only want Sammy to walk in the closet when the door is open. So in other words, we only want this part of the walkable area to be turned on when the door is open. Well, how in the world do we do that? Well, that's one of the reasons why um, Chris Jones and all his wisdom gave us multiple walkable areas. Um, I think we've actually used the first uh, three, I guess, one, two, and three. So I'm going to select walkable area four, walkable area ID four, which is one we haven't used yet. And I'm going to draw this this area right here that goes into the closet as a new walkable area. And I'm, I'm not being very precise here, but you get the idea. I'm just going to fill this in. And very quickly. Okay, so now this is a new walkable area. Um, but again, it's not turned off. So if I run the game right now, which I won't, but if I run the game, he'll, it'll behave the exact same way because even though this is a different walkable area, it still is a walkable area. So this is something we need to do in our room script. We need to turn this walkable area off. Um, if you go into the room script, um, basically we want to turn it on or off at the beginning of when you know the, in the beginning of the room. Whenever whenever Sammy first enters the room um, is when we want to um, do whatever we're going to do with the walkable area. So there's a room load here, which is where we set up our timer a long time ago. I'm going to take that and I'm going to add a new feature that says if because remember, Sammy can walk into the room at any point in the game, so the door might be open or might be closed. We can't just assume that the door is closed whenever Sammy comes in here. So we have to say if, and remember that um, variable that I, that I set up in the last video, is Donatello in closet? Well, let's use that again. So if Donatello is in the closet, in other words, the closet door is closed, then we want to turn off that walkable area. So the function to do that is called remove walkable area. And it takes one parameter, and it's an integer, which is the area number. Well, remember, remember that was walkable area ID 4 that we just created, that red one that went into the closet. So remove that walkable area. Now I can say else, so if Donatello is not in the closet, then we'll just go ahead and say restore walkable area. Actually, we don't need to do that. Actually, I'm not going to do it because by default it's turned on, so there's no reason to restore it here. So if Donatello is in the closet, remove the walkable area. Now... There's one more thing that we need to do, and whenever we, we let him out of the closet, um, which is here, whenever we let him out, we want to turn on that walkable area. So that's called restore walkable area 5. And so that's really what we need to do. Let's see how that works. I hope that made sense. You remove the walkable area, and you restore it again. So right now, I, I shouldn't be able to walk in there because Donatello is in the closet. I'm going to use the key on the door to let him out. Now, even though he's technically still in there, our flag that says is Donatello in closet, that's now false. So that should have turned on the walkable area and it didn't. Oh no, what are we gonna do? Let's see why it didn't. Actually, I don't know why it didn't. Um, oh, because I put the wrong number in here. Okay, I could cut that out, but I'm not going to. Um, so. Just one example of debugging here, which I'll get. I'll make another video about debugging later. But um, I put the number five in here. I should have put the number four. So let's run it again and see. Use the key. Come on, key. There you go. Okay, now I should be able to walk in there, and I can. So that's how that works. I just wanted to be a little clear on that, um, how the restore walkable area, remove walkable area works, and also um, about objects and their baselines. Um, this video sort of was a cleanup video, and there was a couple things in here that I didn't, um, I didn't intend to go over, but just happened to, to do that. So I'm going to make another video, and I'll, I'll upload it really very quickly after this video. Um, that will address regions. Um, somebody else in the comments um, suggested or asked me, I think it was a comment, they might have sent me an email, um, asked me how to um, do the map screen. If you remember in Sammy's Quest, there's a map screen where um, Sammy could, could go to lots of different places on sort of a, an overhead map view. Um, that doesn't really work very well with, with room edges. 
uh, which is what this person was was confused about. You know, how how do you address that if you don't really want to use room edges? Well, that's what I'm going to get into the next video about regions, and we'll get into a couple of things that we can do with with regions. So, um, until then, guys, I hope you're enjoying this, and um, thanks for watching my videos. Bye.